My name is John Jolly Boudram, and I own this 40-foot center cockpit cutter made by Irwin Yachts, built in 1947. So it's a teak, wood, and fiberglass composite boat, meaning the fiberglass is a composite material on top of the wood. It's got a lead-filled keel that extends an additional three feet um, so that the boat stays balanced from capsizing in deep blue ocean water. Because everything's original, we've been refurbishing a lot of the stuff on the boat, so uh, you can see how the teak is freshly stained and oiled on this one and still needing oil on this one. And uh, yeah, so because it's 40 feet long, we got two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and two showers on board as well. I live on a boat mainly because for the future aspect of my life, I'd like to be self-sufficient and um, I do love the ocean. It puts pressure on you, it make, makes you uh, be sort of engaged with life and aware of what's going on. Also, it's beautiful. There's tons of uh, things to see and do and places to go. It opens up my routes for life simply by traveling around the Pacific Rim. I don't really have interest to go into the Atlantic Sea but I definitely have interest to see places like Australia and Bali and Japan. So instead of having an RV or something like that where I could drive around North America, we'll say, or into Central South America, uh, the boat is actually able to take me in straight lines around the globe. Four solar panels that are 100 watt intake each. So we got a 400 watt intake system. Um, because there's actually so much sun here in Salt Spring, we, we, we took down two of them. They we're only using two. We're only wired to two right now because um, it actually overheats a little bit. The, it overclocks the system. Uh, the wind is necessary with the solar system. They're actually designed to be hybrid together. Um, that way, if there is no, no sun uh, or wind, the, the wind will definitely add to the system. Uh, that's a quiet one and it runs on micro winds. So you don't need a full gust of wind to turn the turbine, it just needs a breeze. We've got two barrels on top that we're trying to, or well, actually we're not really trying, we're going to tie in to the boat. Uh, it's pretty simple and we're, I'm thinking of having a, a net or tarp system that actually runs to the barrels, especially where the solar panels are. Uh, because they collect quite a bit of water. Benefits, yeah, lots of those. Um, a would be learning everything there is to know about the ocean, about like marine safety, um, survival. Uh, that being said, you got your hunting and your fishing um, and the benefits of seeing other marine wildlife. So there's tons of otters and birds, uh, lots of fish. We've had the pleasure of encountering a few um, small species of shark, which is actually was pretty fun. That feeling of being self-sufficient and actually going forwards with that and being that in the future. So seeing that goal come to, come to fruition is also very beneficial because it motivates me further to keep, to keep doing it and keeps like getting sustainable resources from, from nature. This is the Bimini area, or the cockpit. I uh, currently have it set up with just the sail bags and the diesel furnace, uh, stuff like that for winter. It's able to sail solo. These two uh, units let the ropes that come from the jib back to where the captain or pilot is operating the ship so you don't actually need a crew because it's center cockpit, the keel is straight down and the rudder is connected to the steering wheel. So as, as I go, this is the unit that raises and lowers the keel. Top sailing speed on this boat is about 15 knots and uh, cruising speed is 11. Um, the motor will also do it do it that fast so the motor is a 50 horsepower diesel and it's inboard uh, made by Perkins. The kitchen area so the rain barrels would be tied into the belly of the boat would ha which um, combined with the two water tanks is 255 gallons of water fresh drinking water 
Um, I would just want to add to that because I want to not be able to have to go to port and stuff like that so often. The water comes in under the sink and I actually have three taps. Uh, one is for the main tank, one is for the auxiliary tank, and then the third one is actually hooked up to an RO maker. So it'll do reverse osmosis from the source water um, and the filters are actually rated to do seawater. So uh, I don't use those at all here on Salt Spring because we don't want to waste the filtration, the usage of the filtration on the filters themselves. Yeah, because um, they'll have to be replaced. And when I take off to do some sailing full time for maybe years at a time, I will definitely be stocking up on things like that so that I can just desalinate ocean water if I need. Still importantly is the refrigerator. It does have a fridge on board. Um, it's actually a fridge and freezer combo. It uses a freezer plate in the fridge to actually cool the fridge down. So the freezer is what's working. Um, I don't use it in the winter simply because it is a waste of power. Um, we have, we can use coolers and things like that. And because it's a freezer, I can just freeze um, ice packs and put those in the cooler and leave it outside and have at it like a normal pantry or at least make it for the weekend, for spring, summer, fall. Uh, the challenges would be Canadian winter, I suppose. That's everyone's main, everyone's main challenge. Um, I personally grew up in Saskatchewan, so uh, winter here is pretty mild, but I do see and feel it. <laughs> so I had to install a second furnace system because my first one actually wasn't uh, maintained properly by the original owners, which I'm even not even sure how old it is or how long it's been installed for. So it definitely needs my attention. So things like that, the old wiring, the refurbishing of the wood, um, Making sure that uh, no mildew and stuff is building up in the corners of rooms I don't use. Those are challenges that people don't have online for sure. Then there's the winds and the sea. Uh, just being aware and watching the weather, um, even though the weatherman's wrong quite often. You get a feel for it. You get a feel for what's going on after you've done it for a little while. So, um, and you can see the ocean react. So like the sea state itself, if things are wavy and rocky and potentially dangerous and you, you only got a life jacket and a dinghy to go to land in, you might as well stay home. <laughs> the solar comes in. I'll show you that in the back room with the, con the controls are at the back room. But it comes in and it runs the batteries. I have lead acid batteries right now. We'd like to upgrade those to lithium. Uh, the lead acid batteries are being charged by the sun and they're in this couch, this stair, under the floor for the motor and I've even got some additional ones running the additional furnace that uh, we needed for this winter. Now, the kitchen's electric. We've got uh, induction stoves and uh, same with the air frying induction oven and I actually don't run those off of my lead acid batteries. Because they're lead acid batteries, it's not efficient. So I use this off of a solar generator that I've got plugged in here. It is a 1,002 watt hour battery bank of lithium. So it'll actually do me a solid like nine hours of something, seven to nine hours of something like a PlayStation 4 and a TV, which is rare, but occasionally we do play that. Uh, the solar is coming in off the house and there's also a 4,000 watt inverter off of those batteries. So when I plug the kitchen into there and drain it a little bit, as the sun and the wind comes in, they can only charge the lead acid so much so that's when we turn the inverter on, which it currently is. It is still on and we are charging off that inverter to the solar generator, which could have its own solar panels and is portable. It only weighs five pounds. So if I want, I can take it to land or to a beach or to a 
to a bonfire or something like that and yeah it could have its own solar panels plugged right in. I learned that I don't care much for um, landlocked areas. Uh, there's not as much freedom for sure. I definitely learned that I've been chasing a sense of freedom for most of my life now and uh, even though we are free and things feel free, uh, it's very oppressive and locked down, especially when you get into cities and um, places like on the interior of the continent. So the second I go further into the, con like past the Rockies, I start to get um, anxious, I guess, because, because now that I've been out here and I feel those benefits, I've learned about myself that I am chasing a sense of freedom and that when, when I leave the ocean and I leave the openness of being able to go wherever I'd like and please and live live day to day and for a potential six months at a time yeah that's that's definitely something that I've learned about myself and I'm grateful to have here. Yeah. This direction is the v-birth area which is also my bedroom and uh, the v-birth is v-shaped so it's quite roomy it has uh, memory foam and another compartment actually underneath, which is all storage. So if I didn't want my sail bags out, ready to go and um, in my grasp, I could load it all under there, which is where they were originally stored when I bought the boat. Uh, there's also tons of drawers, things like that. Um, there's more drawers on this side here and the washroom is in here as well. We use a uh, pump toilets that go to black water tanks um, and they're they are salt water flush so we're not wasting any fresh water to do the to do the washroom operations the cost to get into this lifestyle was for me fairly cheap in comparison to buying a house on land yeah um, I've looked into a few things and I've thought a few things and I had some RVs in the past and I ran into the same troubles that most landowners have. And so for 35,000 after I installed all the wind and additional systems that I wanted to start with um, was the final number that I paid. What does that a tenth of, <laughs> of what a house costs? Um, and I have two bedrooms and two bathrooms and I can house guests. <laughs> Um, I also own my mooring, uh, which under maritime law is a thing. Um, I have the paperwork and the credentials that say I dropped a one ton block of concrete um, just a few years ago and ran uh, nylon ropes from them. So the nylon ropes will last me about 20 plus years without maintenance as opposed to chain, which would rust and uh, need servicing or at least uh, a dive check every year. They, they do those every year. So uh, that saves you $300 a year. Um, I'm also not paying as much as you would think for say my car insurance and stuff like that. Uh, I don't need to, um, again, pay for power bills or rent uh, because I've become self-sufficient in this way. The 35,000 invested was easily worth it, yeah. This is actually for the charts. Back in the day when we used charts, this is a chart table. Now it's my, my toolbox because um, we use digital charts nowadays, which are more accurate. We go back here and there's a second bedroom, which is also my garage because I do not have a second person living here. The second washroom and second shower are also in here. Each, 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 each bathroom has a shower. Um, and those are hooked up to the fresh water, yeah. About four solar panels max. And because that's the max, and there's four solar panels out there, that's why we've reduced two, is because we're not trying to max out the, um, the machine because it, it does wear out over time like everything, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not just gonna last forever. I would advise getting into a sailboat for sure and living on the ocean, but also if you're comfortable with the ocean. If you have deathly fears or you want to overcome those fears for sure, get on the ocean. But um, my suggestion would be to 
get a boat that you feel is comfortable for you um, to do the things that you want with it, but also go a little bit cheap on it. Because if it's your first boat, you're going you're gonna to want to learn off of it and you're probably going to make some mistakes. And you don't want to make those mistakes on something that's worth like $200,000, we'll say. If you're investing that kind of money into a boat, you should start with something that is a bit more flexible and able to make mistakes on, upgrade, and you can always resell it later and invest in the second vessel that you feel more confident going forwards and being like, all right, this is my new home versus you could still have, feel that way, which is how I feel now. I, this is my new home and I'm going to take it further. But if there's ever a chance for me to upgrade for whatever reason and, and liquidate and change, then maybe I would. Personal philosophy on life is uh, no regrets. <laughs> yeah, living with regret is definitely definitely not uh, enjoyable so if if there's ever something that you feel like you should go for you should definitely try you should, that's that's one of my philosophies for sure if if so which is again why we're here on the ocean now um if i didn't jump at the decision to liquidate my rvs and get rid of my land problems then i wouldn't be on the ocean learning how to be self-sufficient and practicing to sail yeah, I personally don't have social media, um, but I do know um, of a few really good YouTube channels that um, advocate stuff like this, uh, self-sustaining of the ocean specifically and uh, um, keeping it clean and safe. Um, it's an Australian YouTube channel called Young Bloods. Um, there's, there's a few other channels similar to that that are maybe sailing orientated or... Um, family raising orientated there's a couple ones like that but i couldn't list them off off by hand but i can list the young bloods off by hand yeah they're a good channel